Hello everyone, so today is the uh, 10th of March 2021 and the Women's Prize for Fiction uh, long list is about to be announced. Um, I'm not uh, planning to follow the long list very closely t this year, but um, I wanted to see what comes up and uh, share my reaction with you and it's about to be revealed so I'm going to tune into this now. The 2021 Women's Prize for Fiction long list. It's been a total joy reading so many wonderful novels um, as part of the judging so, of this prize. So, Bernadina Barista is introducing the prize now. My fellow judges. So now my fellow judges and I are going to announce the 16 books 16 that have been chosen books. for the long list. Okay. Last Lester is the first one um, by Raven Lelani. Uh, I have not read this. I don't want to read this. Um, doesn't sound like anything I would like. So, but it was expected to be there. I think a lot of people were expecting it to be there, and it has gone a lot of buzz. So, I I would expect it. Right. I think this is the novel that most appeals to my generation. I recommend it to my peers. Nothing but blue. Nothing but blue sky by Kathleen McMahon. I have not heard of this one. Uh, let me check what it is about because I haven't seen it anywhere. So it says, um, is there such a thing as a perfect marriage? David thought so, but when his wife Mary Rose dies suddenly he has to think again. In reliving their 20 years together, David sees that the ground beneath them had shifted and he simply had not noticed or had chosen not to. Figure not who Mary Rose really was and the secrets she kept. Uh, some of this hidden in plain sight makes David wonder if he really knew her. Did he even know himself? Um, doesn't sound particularly appealing to me, to be honest. Um, one of these family dramas again. Uh, but we'll see what reviews say. Uh, but for now, two out of two that I'm not super interested in. Sky, Catherine McMahon, widower David examines his relationship with his dead wife and their 20-year marriage. It's a story of grief and living life to the full. Because of You by Dawn... Because of You by Dawn French is the third one. Um, let's see what this one is about. This is a warm, compassionate, funny novel. So this one says, Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, midnight. The old millennium turns into the new. In the same hospital, two very different women give birth to two very similar daughters. Hope lives with a beautiful baby girl. Anna lives with empty arms. Seventeen years later, the gods uh, who kept watch over the broken-hearted mothers wreak mighty revenge and the truth starts rolling, terrible and deep, towards them all. The power of mother love will be tested to its limits, perhaps beyond. Okay, this one sounds mildly interesting to me. Uh, the first one that um, I'm interested in, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, the the cover looks fairly cheesy, so I'm not sure. But um, but yeah, uh, that one I might give a try if my library gets it. Which looks at motherhood and also challenges assumptions about the maternal bond. Perinazi by Susan. Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. Uh, that one was another one that I think a lot of people were expecting. I um, I have not read it, but I have it in my list of reading it. And it's a very short one, so I was actually planning to read it relatively soon. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, I will do that uh, soon. Susanna Clarke is a book that is utterly transporting. It spirits you away into a fascinating universe that stays with you long after you put the book down. How the one arms so the next one is How the One-Armed Sister Sweeps Her House with Terry Jones, uh, which I have heard about and seen some of the people's predictions list. Um, and it does sound interesting to me. Um, it says, um, in the tradition of Sadie Smith and Marlon James, this debut novel set in Barbados from a brilliant Caribbean writer depicts four people, each desperate to escape their legacy, legacy of violence and so-called paradise. Um, so yeah, that sounds a lot more in my alley, so I'm definitely interested in this one. 
Um, we'll see if I can get it from the library or from somewhere else, but this one's definitely is more into my wheelhouse. Your Sister Sweets Our House by Cherie Jones is a tale of violence, loss and love in Barbados seen through four very vivid voices. Summer by Ali Smith. Okay, the next one is Summer by Ali Smith, which I didn't know if she was um, willing to be in this list because I know she decided not to be in the uh, Booker lists. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised that if she was in the competition, she has um, she has made the long list. I have not read this one, but it, again, it's one in my list. I have read the other three in the in the quartet, and I like some more than others. Um, it's always a bit of a hit and miss for me with Ali Smith because she's uh, someone that often writes a lot about. Um, about art and the art circle and that's not my thing but when she makes some political or feminist commentary that's much more my thing so depending on which side of that balance she goes um, I can like her books or not so we'll see with this one such a witty, inventive, playful, probing novel which really catches our zeitgeist in so many different ways while also being fabulously entertaining Burn Sugar, Avni Doshi. Burn Sugar by Avni Doshi is next. Again, no surprise here. I think a lot of people were expecting this one. I read it for the Booker last year um, and I thought it was okay. I thought that it was doing a lot of interesting things, but I thought the execution sometimes was a little bit messy uh, and a little bit all over the place. So, yeah. Um, I'm glad it's here. I think it's a good book, but um, yeah. I, it's not my favorite book ever. Uh, sorry, Kieran. <laughs> but yeah, it is what it is. This is a story of a toxic mother daughter relationship and it's seen through the prison of the mother's dementia. Exciting Times by Anisha Dolan. Okay, the next one is Exciting Times by Nosha Dolan. I think that's how you pronounce maybe. Um, and again, this is one that I have seen around. It has one of these covers that reminds me of normal people and things like that. And <laughs> shallowly enough, I think that's one of the reasons why I have not picked it up because I did not like normal people. Um, I don't like this kind of what they call millennial fiction. And this one looks like it. And I'm just not interested. But um, a lot of people have liked it, so I can't imagine why it's here. It's a taut, gripping book, full of unsympathetic characters that for some reason you remain extremely invested in. The Golden Rule. The Golden Rule by Amanda Craig. This one I had not heard about um, before um, either, but... Um, Let's see what it is about. Okay, this one is um, is uh, labeled and story graph as crime. Uh, when Hannah is invited to the first class carriage of the London to Penzance train in Guinea, by Guinea, uh, she walks into a spider's web. Now a poor young single mother, Hannah wants to escape Cornwall to go to university. But once she married Jake and had his child, her dreams will crash into bitter delusion. Her husband has left her for Eve, rich and childless, and Hannah has been surviving to, by becoming a cleaner in London. Ginny is equally angry and bitter, and in the course of the journey, the two women agree to murder each other's husbands. After all, they are strangers on a train. Who could possibly connect them? Um, yeah, that the first part was like, oh, maybe, but... Uh, when they decide to murder their husbands. Um, yeah, probably not for me. We'll see what the reviews say, but it um, doesn't sound like my cup of tea. Um, but yeah, it always happens in this kind of thing. by Amanda Craig. It's a thrilling, rollicking, scorching state of the nation novel, which holds a mirror up to the um, differences and the inequalities between the genders, the classes, but also the rural city divide. Yeah, yeah, see, it's transcendent. Transcendent Kingdom by Yeah Yassi is the next one. Um, and this one has been in my radar. Um, I read Homegoing and I thought it was okay. Um, and I have heard this one is a very different one. 
and some people like it and some people don't. Um, it's one of those that if I come across it in the library, I probably will pick it up, but I'm not going to go out of my way to pick up, I think. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it makes it to the long list, maybe. Kingdom had me in tears, wailing. The most emotional I felt after reading a book for a long, long time. Detransition Baby by... Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Um, yeah, I have also heard about this one. And it's one that I am interested in. Uh, it's not one that I have gone and sick out yet, but... Um, but it's one that sounded interesting about um, transgender communities and um, things like that. Um, complicated uh, relations with gender and things, uh, which is something that sounds interesting. I don't know, it, again, the cover looks a little bit like millennial fiction, which again is not something I'm crazy about. The one I've read I haven't really liked. Um, things like, again, Sally Rooney is the prime example, by like also Brandon Taylor, I would say it's millennial fiction, things like that. I'm I'm just not into. It sound it tends to sound very um, pedant pedantic to me without being deep or saying anything very meaningful. I hope this one is not like that. Um, but yeah, I I might I might pick it up by Tori Peters is a modern comedy of manners viewed through the lens of three women, both trans and cis. The Vanishing Half. The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett is one that um, I think was in most people's list and I think it fits the price. I read it, I did not like it. I think it's very over um, hyped. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it but for me it was just very forgettable and it was I was not connected to the characters and I just didn't think it was that special. So, yeah, but a lot of other people did, so that's probably why it's in this list. Brit Bennett, this is a beautifully written novel and psychologically very complex and it looks into the consequences of racism and its effect on the human psyche and how it can determine people's lifestyle choices and relationships and shape their fate. No one is talking about this by... No one is talking about this by Patricia Lockwood. I think I have seen this somewhere, but I don't remember what it is about. Uh, uh, let's see what it says here. Um, um, at this urgent journal defining book opens, a woman who has recently been elevated to prominence for her social media post travels around the world to meet her adoring fans. She's overwhelmed by navigating the new language and etiquette of what she terms the portal, where she grapples with an unshakable conviction that a vast chorus of voices is now dictating her thoughts. Uh, okay, that. It's very long description, but that does not sound anywhere um, appealing to me. And it's blurb by Sally Rooney and Gia Tomutino. So, sounds very millennial again. Um, not interesting. I don't think so. <laughs> a Patricia Lockwood is a book that does its own thing. It takes risks while maintaining warmth, being very moving and profoundly insightful into human nature. Unsettled ground. Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. Again, haven't heard about this one. Uh, so let's see it together. Twins Jeannie and Julius have always been different from uh, other people. At f 51 years old, they still live with their mother, Dot, in the rural isolation of poverty. They rented cottage and simultaneously their armor against the world and their sanctuary. Inside its wall, they make music. In its garden, they grow and sometimes kill everything they need for sustenance. But when that dies, suddenly threats to their livelihood start raining down. At risk of losing everything, Jenny and her brother must fight to survive in an increasingly dangerous world as their mother's secrets unfold, putting everything they thought they knew about their lives at stake. Um, not sounding particularly appealing to me. Um, sounds like very generic, so yeah, I don't think I will pick that up unless it, I hear something else from uh, other people's reviews. Claire Fuller 
This tells the tale of 50-year-old twins who still live with their mum and what happens to them when she dies unexpectedly. Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers is... Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. Also not heard about it, but it has a very similar cover to Commonwealth, which I didn't like, which doesn't have to be anything like it, but uh, yeah. Uh, 1957, Southeast Suburb London. Jan Sweeney is a feature writer on a local paper, disappointed in love and on the brink of forty, living a limited existence with her turquoise and mother, a small life from which there is no likelihood to escape. Uh, when a young Swiss woman, Gretchen Tilbury, contacts the paper to claim that her daughter is the result of a virgin birth, it is down to Jean to discover whether she is a miracle or a fraud. That sounds a lot like um, Emma Donahue's The Wonder, right? But the more Jean investigates, the more her life becomes strangely and not unpleasantly intertwined with that of Tilbury's. And Gretchen is now a friend and her quick charming daughter Margaret, a sort of surrogate child. Uh, yeah, not, not particularly interesting. Is a story set in the 1950s about a local journalist who covers the incredible tale of a woman who claims to have been a virgin when she gave birth to her daughter and consent by, consent by, by Annabelle Lyon. Um, also not heard about it. So this one um, says that it was long listed for the Giller Prize. Uh, Saskia and Jenny are twins alike in appearance only. Again, other twins, many twin books. Saskia is a grad student with a single-minded focus on her studies, while Jenny is glamorous, thrill-seeking and capricious. Still, when Jenny is severely injured in an accident, Saskia puts her life on hold to be with her sister. Uh, Sarah and Matty are sisters with another difficult dynamic. Matty, who is younger, is intellectually disabled. Sarah loves nothing more than fine wines, perfumes and expensive clothing and leaves home for the first opportunity. Um, yeah, this one maybe, depending on the reviews. It sounds like a bit of a not guilty pleasure, but one of those books that you read when you don't want to think a lot. So I don't know how that would go. By Annabelle Lyon, which is so, so clever and so concise, yet just goes into the most profound issues in such depth. <laughs> so there you have it. The 2020. So yeah, that was it. Um, I have heard about half of them maybe, um, and uh, I've read maybe a couple, and there are like another two or three that I might want to read. Um, a couple of them were already in my list, and a couple that I have added. Um, we'll see the reviews of people when they are more read um, of the other ones, but um, yeah, overall. I'm not super excited about this list, which is good for me because I don't need another project and another 50 other books that I want to read. So yeah, that was about it. That was my reaction. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about this list. If you have read any of them and you will um, tell me not read that one, it's actually really good. Or you will tell me actually don't read that one, it's not worth your time. I would love to know so that I can um, tune my expectations.